Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality, and well-being into addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body what is in the world of biology standard operating procedure because the human body, the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. Let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones, friends, family members, workmates today as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about prescription drugs or nutritional supplements or the longevity products or skin care, skin ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, we can help clear up the confusion. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products here advertised on the program, you can head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right off the website, or you can sign up to join me in my mission to help educate the world about how powerful and important a good nutritional supplement program can be. Of course, you can earn yourself thank you checks by signing up, one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a business. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, and they can give you the scoop. Or you can sign up right off the websites, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or brightsideben.com. If you want to purchase any of my Truth Treatment products, including my retinol gel, Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Serum, or Truth Balm, head over to truthtreatments.com. That's truthtreatments.com, and you can order products directly off of the website. Okay, we are talking skin health here. Last last uh, we spoke, we talked about how we have to turn things on if we want to have better health in general, if we want to have better internal health or skin health, we got to improve the dynamic nature of the body. And that's why getting healthier inside and out involves stimulation, activation, turning things on. Stagnation is always the enemy. Movement is our friend. Stagnation is the enemy. Movement is our friend. And this activation process, turning on the production of skin cells and fibers like collagen and elastin and reticulin, these are fibers that are in the skin that keep us from wrinkling. These are fibers that break down over the course of time and are responsible for much of the signs of aging. Well, if you want to have healthy, beautiful skin, if you want to have youthful skin, you got to figure out how to turn those fibers on. You can't put the fibers on your skin. You can't put collagen on your skin to have healthier skin. You can't put elastin fibers on the skin, even though a lot of skincare products will mislead consumers into believing that you can rub collagen on your skin to get rid of your wrinkles. Can't do it that way, but you can stimulate the skin. You can exercise the skin. You can destabilize the skin. Remember, exercise means destabilize. X arc to destabilize. You can exercise skin cells. You can turn on the production of various fibers. You can turn on the production of moisture factors. You can have moisture, more hydrated, softer skin by using destabilizing or exercising techniques. But very few people, unfortunately, know how to leverage this activation or this destabilization of the skin to get better, healthier, stronger, moisture, softer, younger looking, prettier, more attractive skin. So in terms of the skin, you got to feel something on the skin if, you're, if you want to stimulate it. you got to feel something. If you're not feeling something on the skin, you're not optimizing stimulation. A certain amount of stimulation 
a threshold amount of activation is required if you're going to really get the effects of the destabilization. And if you're going to really maximize or stimulate the new tissue, if you're going to generate new tissue, you got to feel something when you apply the product. And there's lots of ways to feel something on the skin to get that activating effect from your topical skin ingredients. You can use scrubbing materials called exfoliating agents. There's lots of different exfoliating agents. They come in two major, major types. You've got synthetic or plastic type uh, exfoliating scrubby agents, and you've got the natural scrubby agents. The synthetic ones tend to be round, perfectly spherical. They're usually made out of plastic-like materials. They call them polymers, polyethylene, polyurethane, etc. Unfortunately, these days, it's becoming more and more evident that these scrubby beads, which are super, super tiny, much smaller than the head of a pin, it's becoming more and more evident that these scrubby beads, these plastic scrubby beads, are finding their way into the water supply, ultimately into fish and animals that eat the fish, even humans that eat the fish. According to the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, in the last 10 years, scientists examining beaches have found significant quantities of these little microplastic scrubby beads on beaches and in marine sediments all over the world. American scientists have found them in the Great Lakes. At one site, concentration of these microplastics was greater than that found outside plastic factories. They actually concentrate in, o in ocean water. Biggest problem associated with these little tiny scrubby particles or scrubby beads is that when things get that small, tiny little ocean creatures, shrimp and krill and sea anemones and jellyfish, etc., these tiny little critters can ingest the particles. And from that point, they can enter into the bloodstream of the animals, that is, and cells and tissues. They can incorporate them, cells into seahorses and sea stars, etc. And then they accumulate and bigger animals eat the smaller animals and on up the food chain, these little plastic scrubby particles can go, ultimately winding up in the systems of the largest predator animals, and that includes us. But you don't need to use these little plastic scrubby particles, and in fact, they're being phased out by a lot of companies. Unilever, which is a humongously big multi-corporation, multi-national corporation that makes skincare products and healthcare products, is phasing out these little plastic scrubby particles. I used to formulate scrubby, scrubby beads made out of something called diatoms. Diatoms are tiny shells deposited by creatures over the course of millions of years. They leave, leave their shells on the... Uh, on, on, in, in the sand and, and in the ocean as well. And these little tiny scrubby particles, these hard particles are made out of silica. I used to buy them from a French company called Alban Mueller. They're made out of calcium, they're made out of silica, and they make very, very effective scrubby substances. Silica in general makes a really good scrubby substance. Silica is the hard stuff in shells, whether you're talking about the shells of nuts or the shells of seeds or the, the shells of ocean creatures. Speaking of nuts, shells from various nuts also make good exfoliators, as do the shells from seeds. Even crushed up grains of rice make a good exfoliator. You can make your own scrubby particles, scr I'm sorry, scrubby beads, scrubby products with scrubby beads and scrubby particles using coffee or sugar or salt or baking soda. You can mix it up in coconut oil. You can put in a little avocado if you like a stiffer consistency. Coconut oil tends to melt on skin temperature. So if you put some avocado in with your coconut oil, give it a little stiffness. You can also get yourself some bentonite clay, maybe some kaolin clay or French clay, and mix it in with a little bit of aloe juice, create a paste, and then put in some walnut shells or almond shells that have been crushed up in a coffee grinder, crushed up into a fine powder. It makes a wonderful scrub, especially in combination with the coconut oil. If coconut oil has vitamin E in it, so it'll reduce some of the irritation that can be caused by the scrub. If you add a little lemon juice or honey, uh, you'll get, uh, or apple cider vinegar for that matter, you'll get the alpha hydroxy acids from the lemon juice. Honey also has alpha hydroxy acids, as does apple cider vinegar, and, and alpha hydroxy acids will accelerate the skin lightening effects and also get you some some, um, some exfoliating effects too. So you can make your own skin lightening products using these scrubby particles, these uh, seeds and, and ground up seeds and also ground up shells. Uh, the coffee grinder makes one of, the, one of the best skincare tools you can have. Just by grinding up shells and grinding up seeds, you can make your own little scrubby particles and exfoliate your skin and lighten your skin up as well. There's another really cool way to exfoliate and lighten the skin and it involves using a vitamin. I'm sure you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. We'll, uh, We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. All right, we are back on the 
Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here momentarily, and we do have lines open for you. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or the longevity products or the longevity business or skincare, or skincare ingredients, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you've been diagnosed with something crazy and you don't know what to do, we can help you as well. 844-236-6010. I got a letter here from a gentleman who says... Uh, He's got, uh, he was diagnosed with something called Erdheim-Chester disease. Erdheim-Chester disease or Erdheim-Chester syndrome is also known as polyostotic sclerosing histiocytosis. What the heck does that even mean? The craziness, these medical diagnosis, polyostotic sclerosing histiocytosis. Think about it. If you got diagnosed with this, you went to the doctor's office and he says, you have polyostotic sclerosing histiocytosis. What would you even begin to do? Well, all you got to do is figure out what this thing, this, this mumbo-jumbo medical, medical uh, uh, um, alphabet soup means. Polyostotic sclerosing histiocytosis simply means polyostotic, means many bones, poly, many, ostotic bones, many bones, sclerosing hard fibers. You got hard fibers in your bones. And histiocytosis means the histiocytes, which are immune cells, are accumulating. That's all it means. See, polyostotic sclerosing histiocytosis simply means you've got an immune system problem and it's depositing in bones and your bones are starting to get fibrous. You've got an immune system problem, period. Immune system is your defense system. That means your body's defending itself against something. Well, it's not defending itself against pixie dust. It's not defend, defending itself against little elves that shoot arrows. It's defending itself against something you're putting in your blood. That means unless you're an IV drug user or you're breathing something in, you work in a coal mine or a nuclear power plant, chances are you're eating the wrong food. It's as simple as that. I know I hate to be glib here, but really, we don't want to get all confused and cr made crazy by these ridiculous diagnoses. You don't need a fancy Latin diagnosis to reverse degenerative diseases. Just common sense. If you got polyostotic sclerosing histiocytosis or any other immune or inflammatory condition, focus on your digestive health, patch up the digestive system with good bacteria and by using digestive strategies and make sure you're eating less crappy food, especially sugar and flour. And then, of course, use your relaxing techniques, including deep breathing and activating that parasympathetic nervous system. Every single degenerative disease, whether it's polyostotic sclerosing histiocytosis or amyotropic lateral sclerosis or myasthenia gravis or whatever, they all require the same reversal strategies. Fix the digestive system, stabilize the blood sugar system, and relax the body, especially using oxygenation and respiration, respiratory techniques. It's really that simple, folks. And you don't need a doctor for any of that. You don't need a prescription to, 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 for deep breathing. All right. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to make sense out of some ridiculous diagnosis that you got from the doctor, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Of course, if you have questions about skin care or skin health, we can help you as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. All right. So one of the great all-time skin lightening ingredients if you're dealing with, uh, if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, if you want to exfoliate your skin, if you want to stimulate collagen production, just for all around skin health is vitamin A. I know I've said this many, many times. I'll keep saying it. It is the go-to vitamin for the skin. It's the skin's favorite vitamin. And you can use it to exfoliate your skin, to remove dead skin cells, in addition to turning on the production of all the good stuff, as well as lightening the skin. And we're going to talk about skin lightening here in a little bit. Actually, we'll probably talk about that tomorrow. So vitamin A is the skin's favorite vitamin, but you got to use the right form of vitamin A. There's three types of vitamin A, as we've said so many times on the show. The cheapo kind, the kind you'll find in most skincare products, the kind you'll find in skincare products that are made by companies that really don't want to do anything to the skin is called retinyl palmitate. You might get a little bit of benefit from retinyl palmitate. That's R-E-T-I-N-Y-L, retinyl Second word, palmitate, P-A-L-M-I-T-A-T-E. You'll see it in most, uh, you'll see in a lot of skincare products. Your cheapo skincare products or your department store skincare products will typically have this stuff. When I, whenever I wanted to formulate a product and I didn't want too much activity, that's the kind of vitamin A I would use. Because then you don't have to worry about irritation. You don't have to worry about exfoliation or peeling. It really doesn't do very much and it's very cheap. And 
uh, unless you have a high concentration, I should say. If you have a super high concentration of retinal palmitate, you may get some benefits, but typically you'll see it. It'll be used in 1% or half percent or 0.1% uh, combinations or uh, concentrations. The good stuff, the good vitamin A is retinoic acid and retinol. Retinoic acid does require prescription. It can be irritating, but retinol, now that's the stuff. That is the good stuff. That's the stuff you want to look for. You do need a high, relatively high concentration, around 5% or so, and you will get some exfoliation from it. In fact, it's the exfoliating property that makes retinol so problematic, and it's the reason why you're not going to see it in a lot of products. It's the reason why if you do see it in products, you're going to see it in very low concentrations. And it's the reason why this exfoliating effect, the skin peeling effect, is why Retin-A or retinoic acid requires a doctor's prescription, requires a doctor's permission. You got to have a doctor permit you to use retinoic acid. That should be insulting to everybody that you need a doctor's permission to use a skincare product. Nonetheless, retinoic acid, Retin-A, requires a doctor's permission, prescription. And you can't really find effective doses of retinol in department store products. Now, if you want a high concentration of retinol, go to truthtreatments.com and check out my retinol ball or retinol gel. It's 5.0% uh, retinol with a whole bunch of vitamin C, no preservative, no fragrance, no emulsifiers, etc. And it'll last you six months if you use it as directed. Vitamin A in its retinol form speeds up the movement and activity of cells, of skin cells. As cells are rising up from the bottom of the skin to the top of the skin, they're releasing their moisture factors and releasing all their health benefits, making more collagen. As, as, your, uh, stim as cells are rising up to the top, they're turning on all the fiber-making cells at the bottom. So exfoliation and increasing the movement and stimulation of the skin is just as important as increasing the movement and stimulation of any of the cells in the body. It's stimulation, it's activation, it's exercise. And you're gonna get more collagen, you're gonna get more elastin, and you're gonna get smoother and softer skin. It's like mechanical exfoliation, except it's not really, you're not scrubbing. So you don't get as much of that irritation, although you may get a little bit if you overuse it, and that's why you want to combine your retinol with vitamin C, which I've done for you in my retinol gel. You're going to get more moisture factors when you exfoliate with retinol. You're going to get more hyaluronic acid when you exfoliate with retinol. Remember, hyaluronic acid is a sponge, a moisture sponge. It also turns on the growth of things. You just get overall health benefits. It's like a tonic for the skin. Retinol, used appropriately in the right concentrations, is a skin tonic. It gives you smoother, softer skin. It's got anti-wrinkle effects. It's got moisturizing benefits. And when you use retinol on a regular basis, in a high enough concentration, not only will, you, will, will your skin be anti-age, not only will you be preventing and even reversing wrinkles and reversing photo damage and photo aging, but you'll also get moisturization benefits, you also get hydration benefits. And using retinol as an exfoliating agent is one of the best, maybe the best, all-time ways, all-time best ways to, to uh, address one of the biggest complaints people have about their skin, which involves dark spots. Exfoliation techniques can be very helpful here, especially when you're exfoliating with retinol because retinol has anti-pigment effects and it has exfoliating effects, kind of a one-two punch for lightening the skin. The, the drug skin lightener, the prescription skin, skin lightener, hydroquinone, is incredibly toxic. Retinol is not only non-toxic, but it's a vitamin. It's nutritional. We'll talk about skin pigmentation and a couple of different types of skin pigmentation tomorrow as we continue talking skin health on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back. Hi. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Get your calls here in just a moment. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to brightsideben.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also go to my blogs, pharmacistben.com. Thank you, Robert Lundgren, for doing such a fine job on pharmacistben.com and also criticalhealthnews.com. Thank you, John T. Collier, for setting that up. That's my blog with George Nori. You can order longevity products right off the website, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well. Got a letter here from uh, Bridget. We'll get your calls here in just a sec, so hang tight. Got a letter from Bridget. She says, I'm a 38-year-old woman. I love this letter. I'm a 38-year-old woman, 132 pounds, 5 feet, 5 inches tall. My left foot and leg swell every day. That's a problem. Check this out. To the point that I need to buy two different shoes. That's some serious swelling. But here's the, here's the interesting part. The next word, next sentence. I am very healthy. I am on no medication. 
I've had three different doctors look at it over the past five years, and I've been told it's not vascular. Are you kidding me? This is why I do this program, you guys. This is a gal who thinks she's healthy. She says she's very healthy. And I'm not attacking this lady. This is just how we think. She says she's very healthy, but her left foot and leg swell so bad to the point she has to buy two different shoes, and her doctor tells her it's not vascular. It's not her circulatory system. Unbelievable. Her instructions are to keep it elevated and drink lots of water and to avoid salt. Unbelievable. Here's the deal for Bridget, anybody listening. If your left foot and leg is swelling, you have a circulatory problem, period. No matter what your doctor told you, you have a blood vessel problem. The blood is not circulating. Anytime you have swelling in the bottom of the body, in the legs, in the feet, it's called edema. Anytime you have swelling, that means the blood is not circulating as it should. That means the blood is dirty. That means the blood is coagulated and clotted and stagnant. That means a digestive problem. 99.99% of the time, this is a gal who needs to work on her digestive system, not avoid salt and not drink lots of water and keep it elevated, although that might be a, help a little bit. Definitely don't want to avoid salt, though. Anyway, digestive strategies, blood sugar strategies, drink, uh, make sure you're practicing your relaxation techniques, your deep breathing. That's pretty much it for everything, you guys. I know I'm probably putting myself out of a job, and I'm probably putting a lot of doctors out of business, too. If everybody took that advice, we wouldn't need medical professionals, except for, surgeon, except for emergency surgery. All right, that's from Bridget. Hopefully she's listening. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's hit the phones. Tony in South Carolina. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Tony, are you there? Hey, Ben. Hey, buddy. Uh, What's up, I'm, man? I'm up on the roof. <laughs> you are? What are you doing on the roof? Well, I, I put a metal roof on my shop, and it's getting all moldy, so I'm up bleaching it, washing it, trying all to right. All right. All right. What's it like in South Carolina today? It must be hot on that roof. Uh, yeah, South Carolina is known for that. <laughs> about, the, about the end of your show, I'll be in the air conditioning, so it'll be fine. All right. What's cooking, man? How can we help you? Uh, about three years ago, uh, a guy named Ben Fuchs called me up right after I joined Longevity. Really? I, yeah, nice I guy? Out his, checked out his YouTubes and phone rings, and here's this guy named Ben calling me. I don't know who he is, but... Oh, okay. So we chatted for a minute. Um, so I've been on Longevity for about three years. I take the Beyond Tangy Tang Jurine rigs religiously. Okay. I don't take the OFX as much as I should, because I, I forget to go into the fridge to get the liquid. All right. Um, and I take the glucogel four, four capsules a day. Um, at that time, I was working a job. Um, I'm 52 years old. Um, I weighed 257 pounds. Um, after getting on longevity, um, I just, you know, getting the nutrition, I just wasn't hungry, so I didn't eat. You know, I didn't stop by the store and get the, you know, bag of chips and a pop. You mean as you supplemented, you, you found that you were snacking less. Is that what you're saying? And now I'm 185 pounds. Whoa! Wait a minute. You lost 100 pounds? No, 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 no. What? 257 to 185. Oh, okay. Actually, I got down to 179, but I went back up. But. All right. So you lost 80 pounds or so. That's pretty darn good, Tony. And I was working. Um, October of last year, I got tired of working and told the man I was leaving. So I, I basically retired, even though I'm 52. So I started sustainable sustainable farming. I got some pigs, goats, chicken. Uh, so I'm working on the pasture, getting things going. But about a month into my pseudo-retirement, which you can call farming retirement, um, I started to notice my urine was stinky. Okay. And I'd bought you know, your urine test strips for the pH. Okay. And my pH had always been like 6.5, 6.75, 6.25. Um, so I tested my urine in the morning. I mean, my urine's never in 52 years been stinky. You know what I mean? Okay. I couldn't even smell it. Um... And I'm testing it, it's come out at 57555. Five, five. Um, it's a little bit on the acid side. Are you saying that, it, that right now it's in, in the fives? Yeah, right now it's in the 5756 five, range. Okay. Yeah, that's a, little bit, that's a little bit acidic. Acid urine 
It typically means that your body is trying to eliminate something, and acid represents toxicity. So there's something percolating in there, my friend, and we've got to figure out what that is, and as always, you want to focus on the digestive system. That's the first thing to look at, because when stuff is getting into the blood, it's usually getting into the blood through the intestine, through the digestive system. So first thing to do is look for food. Now, I'm assuming you're not doing a, eating lots of asparagus, because that'll, that'll make your urine stinky, too. But no, my, typic- my asparagus didn't come up, but all the food okay. I ate, I right out of the garden. I mean, they're all organic. Anything going on with... Well, you know, you can have reactions, Tony, and this is really interesting because a lot of folks don't realize this, but you can have reactions to vegetables. Vegetables can be problematic. A lot of, a lot of vegetables are. In fact, some vegetables are toxic. Tomatoes, for example, have uh, potatoes, tomatoes, uh, eggplant. Those have something, uh, uh, elements in them that can aggravate inflammatory conditions and arthritis and such. So you can, vegetables can be a problem. I would guess that if you have acid urine, however, that your body is somehow accumulating toxicity, and that acid represents toxicity, and that's acid and talk to- those acid and toxicity is being uh, eliminated out in the urine. Only way that can happen, assuming you're not an IV drug user, you're not breathing in, you know, heavy toxins or poisons. Only way that's going to happen is through the digestive system. You may want to try if you're not already on probiotics. You may want to try the uh, nightly essence product, three capsules in the morning, three capsules at night, and then uh, you may also want to try uh, the Fucoid Z, which can help coat the digestive system. But I'd be looking, focusing on digestive health issues if your urine is acidic, and and that does sound like it's a little bit acid. You want your urine, and by the way, you don't want to test the first urine in the morning. You want to test the second urine or the third urine. That'll give you a more accurate uh, reading of what's happening inside your body. Okay? Even, even after the coffee? Well, uh, yeah, it doesn't really necessarily matter after the coffee. Uh, what you want to do, though, is you don't want that first urine, because that first urine isn't an indicator of what's happening throughout the day. Stuff is accumulated through the night, and it's, it's going to give you a, an inaccurate reading of what's ha- based on what's happening inside the body. So you want the second or third urine is really the best urine to test. All right? All right. Thank, you so, cool. thank you so much for your call, buddy. Hey, Appreciate buddy. it, and thanks for the kind words, Tony. God bless, man. Hang and uh, yeah. All right. Take care. All right. Mark in Col- uh, California. What's up, Mark? How you doing, buddy? Hey, pharmacist Ben. Thank hey. you for uh, getting my call. Sure, what's up? Uh, I have a son that's 25 years old. He's in uh, rehab right now. He's only seven days. And I found out that the doctor wants to pre- prescribe Respiradol. Hmm. And I told him that uh, I don't want him taking any drugs. I'm just gonna come what's he, so what's he withdrawing from? What's he rehabbing from? Methamphetamine. And okay, ecstasy. got it. Okay, hang on a second, and we'll talk about Risperdal, uh, which is used, a uh, pretty nasty drug, actually, used for bipolar disorder and such. And we'll talk a little bit about rehab and rehabbing for meth and ecstasy, which are very similar. We'll talk about that when we come back from a break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Hang tight. If you're on hold, we'll get to you when we come back. Don't go away. Got more good health information coming up after this. We are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. We're talking. Oh, my goodness. We were talking to somebody. He's gone now. So we'll just uh, move on. Oh, we're going to talk about Risperdal and uh, methamphetamine and ecstasy. The best way to wean yourself off of these kinds of drugs is to relax the body. When you, when you get yourself off of these kinds of drugs, you're going you're gonna to have... Uh, symptoms of act that represent or the signs of activation of the stress nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system. And so relaxing the body is the most important detox and withdrawal strategy for getting yourself off of medication and getting yourself off of drugs. Indulge yourself in massages and, and uh, 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 naps and hot tubs and hot baths. Just lighten up. Relax the body. As far as Risperdal goes, it's a really awful, awful drug. There's a lot of class action lawsuit commercials from lawyers talking about something called gynecomastia. Gynecomastia is a condition where men grow breasts. Uh, you have nipple discharges and soreness and pain. Really awful condition. It happens in kids even who are taking Risperdal, which is a, a drug used for schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Really awful, awful drug. The company that makes Risperdal, Johnson & Johnson, has already spent millions of dollars settling lawsuits for gynecomastia. Uh, if you're on Risperdal, get off of it if you can. Uh, if you're on Risperdal, you may be eligible for some money from a settlement against Johnson & Johnson. So just look it up, Risperdal, R-I-S-P-E-R-D-A-L, if you want more information on that. Uh, apparently, uh, whoever his psychiatrist is or who do- his doctor is believes that this uh, kid needs to be dosed somehow with an antipsychotic med. 
I'm not sure why that would be, but in any case, I, I actually started off my pharmacy career working in psychiatric hospitals as a psychiatric pharmacist, and it was astounding to me how little we know, doctors, psychiatrists, pharmacists, drug companies, how little we know about how these mental health or psychiatric drugs work. And if you end up being dosed with psychiatric medication, especially, hope, God forbid, if you end up in a psychiatric hospital, it's basically just kind of throw everything against the wall, throw every antipsychotic against the wall, see what sticks and see, see what works. And I remember being in meetings with, with a psychiatrist as a pharmacist and, and listening to them talk about how, well, we're just going to up the Haldol a little bit and drop the Stelazine here, maybe throw in a little Melaril. And, uh, you know, basically nobody knows what the heck's going on, and it's all an experimental process. You don't want to be a guinea pig with psychiatric medication. Practice your own psychiatric techniques. Practice your own mental health strategies, especially involving relaxation, meditation, spirituality, mental and emotional strategies, and there's zillions of them. Nobody needs an antipsychotic medication unless they're having an emergency psyche, a psychotic break. Occasionally that does occur, and occasionally just, just the zonking people out with antipsychotic medication can be helpful or can be important, but only in a, the, the very, 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 very short term. All right. Unless somebody has a, a serious a, a psychiatric problem, and, and occasionally that does happen. But for most people, if you have bipolar disorder, you're weaning yourself off prescription drugs, that's not a reason to be on uh, a, a powerful antipsychotic medication like Risperdal, in my humble opinion. Okay, Stephen, Virginia, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Uh, hi, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, lately we've uh, heard um, uh, speaking, people speaking about uh, getting liver plans that type of detox, and we just wanted to see what your opinion was. Yeah, on. I hear that all the time, too. My, you know, here's my take on liver cleanses, and there's lots of them. The liver processes things. It processes food. It processes sugars. In fact, the liver does hundreds of different, uh, processes hundreds of different elements, and it's involved. It's the most multifunctional organ in the body. It's involved in clearing out and purifying drugs and food toxins, etc. So uh, most liver cleanses involve herbs. Now, I, I like herbs, and as a pharmacist, I used to tincture herbs, and I would wildcraft them and, and dispense them. I've used them in skin care, et cetera. But if you're trying to clean out your liver, if your liver is already overworked, why would you put more substances in the body and in the liver? Uh, why would you give your liver more work to do? You know, the best liver cleanse is to stop putting the stuff in the body, especially that means stop putting food in the body, and that means fasting. That's the best liver cleanse there is. Now, I know there's all kinds of liver formulas and cleansing formulas, et cetera, but to me, it just doesn't make sense, Steve, to, to put herbal material into the body, which at the end of the day has to be processed by the liver. Herbs are medicines, and herbs contain medicinal and pharmacological elements, and as probably most of you know, many drugs are derived or, uh, directly from herbs or they're, they're synthetic versions of, of uh, phytonutrients or phytochemicals that are in, in herbs. So to me, it just doesn't make sense to give the liver more work to do if it's already stressed out. The best way to cleanse your liver and the best way to cleanse your body is to stop putting the stuff in the body and give the body a break. Let it cleanse itself. The body and the liver can cleanse itself. Now, if you really want to go all out with, uh, with, with nutrition in terms of cleansing, use antioxidant, uh, antioxidant nutrients. Use purifying nutrients. Vitamin C is spectacular, absolutely spectacular as a detox substance. It's, it, it's non-toxic itself. It'll clean the liver. It's used by the liver. And it's unbelievably effective. And most people don't get anywhere near the vitamin C that they need. Likewise with vitamin E. Vitamin E is one, we're going to talk about vitamin E tomorrow. Vitamin E is amazingly purifying for the liver. It's amazingly purifying for the body in general. And here's the thing about vitamin E. It's very difficult to get it from food. In fact, nothing, nothing exemplifies the craziness of the idea that you can get everything you need from the four food groups more than vitamin E because vitamin E is not found in very many foods. And even if it is found in foods, mostly in grains and oils, uh, and seeds, it's found in very small amounts. Vitamin E, you need 200 to 400, even up to six or 800 IU a day. You'd have to eat ounces 
You'd have to eat quarts of sunflower oil and wheat germ oil and, and, and pounds of seeds to get that kind of vitamin E concentration. So between vitamin E, vitamin C, something called alpha lipoic acid, selenium, these are all wonderful nutrients for helping clear out the liver. They're non-toxic, and you don't have to worry about the liver overworking to have to deal with these elements. Glutamine is another very important element for helping purify the liver. Sulfur is also, MSM sulfur is also important for uh, cleansing the liver and of course eliminating the stuff that's getting in in the first place through foods through toxins in foods especially processed processed foods excitotoxins and flavorings and such and and just plain old sugar and trans fatty acids for that matter between sugar and fatty acids excitotoxins preservatives in food anything you're having a reaction to in food Food allergens, those are really the problems when it comes to uh, a toxic liver and fatty liver disease affects 100 million Americans. Those are really the issues that we're dealing with and just plain old calories. So if you want to do a liver cleanse, lower your calories, especially when uh, calories that come from sugar, refined flours and, and uh, processed foods and such. And then make sure you're using good, uh, good nutritional supplement program and practice caloric restriction and even fasting. To me, those are the best liver cleanse. And of course, vitamin C is also important. Uh, get on the healthy start pack. You know, that's really what we're talking about here, you guys. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I, I don't know what that was. Thanks for, thanks for your call, Steve. That's really what we're talking about here, you guys. You don't need anything fancy. You need basic nutrients. They're called the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, which function as food for the cells. That's what the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients do. They feed the cells. That's basically what we're talking about here. The Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients and then common sense strategies that don't involve purchasing any fancy, uh, any fancy formulas. And they certainly don't involve prescription drugs and anything the doctor can do. They're just the basics. Focus on digestive health. Eliminate problem foods. Make sure you're practicing intermittent, once in a while fasting. Use caloric restriction, that is restricting the amount of calories. Only eat when you absolutely, absolutely have to eat. Use as much liquid nutrition as possible to take the load off of the digestive system. Avoid sugar, refined flours, and anything that breaks down into, into simple sugars. Diabetes affects millions upon millions upon millions of people. It's a leading cause of death. It's a leading cause of blindness. It's a leading cause of amputation. It's a leading cause of high blood pressure and heart disease. It's a leading cause of misery. And it's voluntary in the sense that we have to do it to ourselves. And then, of course, using relaxation strategies. Don't underestimate the importance of just lightening up, just sitting on the couch and doing nothing. Make sure you're taking naps and, and using hot water, hot showers, massage and Reiki and yoga and meditation and deep breathing strategies. These are all simple little things that we can all do. That's why this program is called The Bright Side. It's the good news that says the body can heal itself. It doesn't need doctors to do it. It needs the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. You can get them from uh, off of my websites from Longevity, the Healthy Start Pack, Selenium, the Ultimate Daily. If you want to throw in a couple other things, the probiotics, the Z-Radical, or the Fucoid Z, and the Biolumin Nightly Essence, restrict your sugar and lighten up and make sure you're practicing your deep breathing techniques. All right. Thanks so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll talk hyperpigmentation. We'll talk about two different separate kinds of pigment that you want to know about if you're trying to get rid of your dark spots. And we'll talk about one that's very, very important when it comes to longevity and aging as well. If you want to purchase any of my Truth, tr truth Treatment products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, spectacular, beautiful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. Thank you.